Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. We missed the whole game. What a day to be alive, that's the best day of the whole day. <laughs> Haven't, a town nestled into the southeast corner of Hampshire, lying between Portsmouth and Chichester. With a population of 125,000 people, it's the home to the resorts of Hailing Island and Rowlands Castle. The population of Havant doubled in the 20 years after World War II, so as to be considered economically part of the Portsmouth conurbation citation needed. Anyone who saw last week's episode will be well aware that Havant is also the home of a football club that got thrashed 8 0 on Boxing Day. So here, the day after New Year's Day, the pressure is on the home side, Havant and Waterlooville to give them their full name since the two sides merged in 1998, to redeem themselves. Dorking Wanderers, meanwhile, face the challenge of making the sequel even better than the original. Although Mark White is keen to treat the game as a standalone, offering his players a blank slate as they look to win their fourth league game in a row. The biggest problem facing Mark right now is that Matt Briggs has broken down on his way to the ground. I don't think I think I struggle to like as many players as I do with Alfie. I've always liked him, even before he scored goals. I just think he's just a nice lad. Right, 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 good. Right, so obviously it's a, a mindset approach today, really. Yeah. All our hard work's been done. That my 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 thing to the players is very much. We've had our day in the sun, so like if this is a, a big rematch for them, then albeit that's a rematch for them. Obviously, the, the, the form book says it's their third game in a week. We look really sharp, so we just have to go about it business as usual, and we can't um, approach it like any kind of mini cup final or something like that. That'd be the worst thing to do. I think discipline is going to be really important. Bearing in mind, we, you know, they went down to 10. Um, but this is perfect for us, really, to be fair. It's, it's nice and wide. I see Briggs being a big danger in this game. He's had a blowout. So at the moment, it's a danger to fucking get here. Um, but I think he's going to be a big danger in the game. All right, but it can't be jovial, but it can't be building it up to be a cup final. It's got to be somewhere in the middle, which is probably professional. Yeah? Good. Oh, fucking hell. Mate, you spilt all that drink, you fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> So Briggsy doesn't get here, he had a blowout on the A34, so he doesn't get it till 2.32. So ironically, he was a big part of my game plan today. So whereas I'd normally swap that, I'm not going to be too flexible. So Bobby, you'll play um, if there's any delay in that at all. But if he does get it, then then Louis is going to do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, warm-up and then Briggsy will just be out there. That's it, okay? Right, you know, it may be... A rematch for them it may be um, a way that they can pat themselves on the back off the back of the worst day of their football in life but ultimately our we've had our day in the sun that's it we've had it done you've had your day in the sun Alfie you can't replicate that shit it won't happen again today in a million years right you scored your three goals you've given it a bit to the fans they bought some snakes all that shit all of that's done done brilliant we've already done the job the job is done and now this is just about business as usual. We're looking sharp, we're scoring goals. They play three games in a week. One of them with fucking 10 men for 80 minutes. 
right, and we're looking great. So for me, all I wanna do is focus on the professional aspect that says that everything points towards a professional performance getting three points. So it's just about what we do and what we're doing right now is really good, okay? So I think we all think, good that you guys know this, they're gonna set up like this. So that'll mean they give us an overload, okay? And that'll mean we've got to deal with an overload they've got. I don't think they'll even try to use the overload, to be honest with you anyway. So today's team is going to be the same team. So Jason Alpha, you need to make sure you don't underpress. So you can make sure they can't just roll it to that one bloke who then fucking puts it in a channel. Okay? So make sure you start high at all times. Compact my discipline top of my list but compact was second. It's a bigger pitch. So when you go from Meadowbank away from home, you just need to realize that it's a bit, it's a bit less unforgiving if you're, if you're too expansive, not compact. It should be a wing back competition. Okay, Nikki? Um, and you're in great form, Nikki, great form. But there are only one or two goals from being knocked over this lot. Like it's only one or two, you know, straight fucking jabs and this lot will collapse. I'll tell you that now, right? But we're in no hurry, boys. We're here to be professional. We're here on this fucking nice surface just to play them off the park, lads. Just play them off the park. Alfie, just play off shoulders. That's all you've got to do. All you fucking need to do. Your job is done in this tie. You get one today as a bonus. Play off shoulders. That's all you need to worry about. Right, don't get involved in anything at all because you've had your day in the sun. No one takes that shit away. You just, you want to go out there today, the least fuss person at all about this game. Even if they're standing out there fucking posters with your mum, right? Literally, which I see one of them on the way in. <laughs> right? You need to fucking, you need to, Alf, you need to literally be like, yeah, mate, my, well, I've had my day, right? Can you just check, Carl? I've had my day and I'm just going to fucking enjoy this one. Right? You look good. If you didn't, I would, I'd tell you, you know that. You are sharp as fuck right now. You're sharper than you realise. Right? So what you've got to do is use that sharpness to just outspar them. Move the ball too quickly. Do everything. Don't relax at all. So all you've got to do, not be complacent, get the warm-up right, get the information right. Don't let your teammates be complacent. The minute one of you is strolling about or not doing what you normally do is they're the little bits you don't want to see. Right? Okay? All right, boys? Come on. I think, they're, I think they're gonna go, they're gonna go direct, aren't they? And they're gonna just try and get them boys on the ball. And to be fair, he's probably doing the right thing. I think it's gonna be a bit of a basketball match. I think the back three are gonna have to get us up the pitch. We wanna go with the win, but it's all over you saying, yeah? It's all over the place, Baz, can we work out, Kane, you're in charge. Work out the wind's going one way or the other. <coughs> but just think, I wanna go with it 100%, yeah. There he is. With just half an hour to go until kickoff, Matt Briggs has finally arrived. Getting changed today. Fucking hell. It's a big gamble playing Briggsy like this. If honestly if Jimmy was here or something wouldn't bother. But he's a you know what I mean? It's a big It's not ideal that. Do you want to speak to him, Louis? Just say, look, you know what I mean? About the rubs and that. Just um, asking for plenty of the same. The, the, the key really to this match is, uh, is not making it any kind of sequel. It's not a sequel, it's a different game. Um, you know, um, having, they're gonna be on a big revenge mission, a mission obviously. Um, they've had their pride hurt. Um, and uh, you know what we can't afford to do is is play the game emotionally. You know what I mean? It's just got to just play the way we've been playing. We're playing a lot better. Um, but I also need to remember that they're a team that's they are full time and um, full time professional footballers, and they're one of the best sides in this league. And you know we've got to make sure we're you know fully respecting that. You know, obviously we're playing a team that that they know they've just been beaten eight 0 and that's. Um, that's going to be a real mental um, emotion for them today. Positively, if they get the first goal, it could mean they're playing 
negatively, they go a goal or two behind, it could mean they're playing at 40%. So I think, you know, it, it could go either way today. I just hope we give a good account, really. Just play the football we've been playing um, and entertaining. Because, I mean, it sounds like a cheap comment, but they do play entertaining football. And, and, and I love that, do you know what I mean? And haven't are going to be dangerous today because, you know, they'll be... You know, to a degree, is it a hide into nothing? To a degree, you know, you've been beaten eight nil. You know, um, to a degree, it's a, it feels like a hide into nothing. To a degree, so I think they've got that sort of hall pass, if you like, and that I think that'd be their biggest strength today. Is that uh, I think I think there's low expectation on them. So you're a Haven't fan? Yeah. How long have you been a Haven't supporter? Um, 15, 20 years. When Haven't want to play, they can. But obviously, these are on fire at the moment. Were you shocked last week? Yeah, to be fair. Was last week a low point in your time? <laughs> oh, yes. I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> um, what would you take from today? Well, better than a nil-nil draw than the last one we had. Um, so at least the one nil at least a win out of this anyway. Do you think that's Get realistic over. after last week? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but at least we had a nil-nil and closed up shop really, didn't we? Eh? Even though we didn't put a lot of pressure on them last, last game, did we? Eh? So, yeah, I'll settle for anything really. Was that, I mean, that must have been a fairly low point in your time. Yeah, it was, it wasn't good. Wasn't a good day. Um, <laughs> uh, usually that's what they, they tend to do. Uh, if, whoever you play on Boxing Day, you usually play them on the New Year's Day fixture. I think it's usually it's a local team as well, as local as possible. I local team, so yeah. Like so, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's, they, they do that every season like that. It would work out that way. But usually it's not 8 0. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it'd be 8 0. <laughs> I'm not that optimistic. But, yeah, hopefully, I'll take a draw. I'll take a draw. Calm for the storm. Well, happy with that. We were like this the other day. Perfect for me. Perfect. We just got to outrun them, outthink them. Don't fall, don't fall for the old, the old three card trick of the keeper booming at the length of the pitch, them getting a corner, the crowd cheering, and, and them thinking they're having a good game. They're not having a good game at all. Our job today is to get the ball down and fucking play the way the Wanderers play. At the moment, we're playing the way Wanderers play and we look a different class. We look too fucking good. But we've got to fucking really keep that up. We've got to really keep that up. Dan, there will be an overload, we think, at the back, mate. So you'll find that early. And then we'll push it into wingers, OK? Listen, one thing we're going to have to do in this game is work fucking hard. We've got to work hard here, boys, OK? Let's go. Let's not get involved in this shit here. I was thinking that the way down here. We've got the wind, yeah? Ah. Uh, Cheers, Tom. Rainstorms and relentless wind are on the menu weather-wise, and Dorking have won the toss, meaning Barry Fuller has forced Haven't to switch ends, putting the wind firmly behind the Wanderers. It's only an issue when the ball is in the air, which is something Mark doesn't want from his side. Time! Chino! Chino! Fucking time! Yeah, he's the one sitting. Yeah. 14's out there. As Carl and Dino figure out the haven't positions, the players are beginning to implement the Wanderers' pattern of play. Look at Nile on the edge. A long kick from having keeper Ross Warner leads to a heavy barge on Dan Gallagher, but the refereeing team views the incident somewhat differently to the Dorking bench. That's a foul, ref! No, no, is that a foul? Yes or no? Is it a foul? Yes or no? Yes or no? It's a foul. Put your, put your flag up. Put your flag up. Play feet if we can, George. Relax, relax, George. Relax. Well done, well done. Other side. Ref! Fucking hell! Fucking hell, ref! Fucking hell! The best outcome Billy Clifford could have hoped for here was a yellow card, which makes his challenge all the stranger. Seconds, Nicky! Nicky, seconds! We, we seem to stop. 
Jordan Cheadle's left foot offers up some half chances, but Tavern to packing the box, and like Nicolas Cage before an interview on Parkinson's, clearing their lines. Boys, one of them's got to be in front there. Five minutes into the game and having to make their first incursion into the box thanks to a free kick out wide. DJ! Travel! Travel! Darren Oldacre drops back to pick up the ball and deliver it out wide so that Dorking can progress up the flanks. This avoids the danger of losing the ball in the middle of the park. Sadly, Cheadle's ball into McManus' feet while he's heavily marked is what Mark would call a pocket ball, and that's to be discouraged. George! George! He keeps playing the same ball into Niall, back to goal here. Cheat! Cheadle! Winger early, listen, winger early, all transfer, listen, all DJ, not in these pockets. Good, good, shape. Two and one, two and one, Baz, go on. Barry Fuller bursts forwards into space, but his right side partner, Matt Briggs, is being heavily marked. Cheadle varies the corner routine, but finding space in the box is proving a futile task. Baz. Baz. Transfer! Come on, other way, quick, quick! Alfie! Do it! Alfie, spin! Alfie! Alfie! No, it's in there. No, good running blow, man. DJ! DJ! Oh, take him away, take him away, go on, take him away. No, I'm on. Turn! Chino, excellent! They're the pockets, aren't they? Yeah. Fucking look at the a week earlier, Haven't went a full 90 minutes without a single spell of pressure, but this week is an entirely different affair. Jake Andrews is Haven't's biggest threat right now, and his smart reverse pass opens the Wanderers' defence. Runners! Fuck me, boys. Runners. Yeah. The home side are clearly intent on stopping counter attacks by any means necessary. Sideways, Buzz! Go on, come across. Go on, DJ. Has he changed it? That's what I'm missing, that fair pass, Chucky. They'll get that one there. Sideways! Oh my god, Joshy. Come on, boys. Fucking sharpen this up, man. Dorking are nowhere near their best and haven't a sensing an opportunity to get themselves in front. It's bit my tongue. Yeah, we're gonna get round, boys! Get round, boys! Tommy Wright picks the pocket of Dan Gallagher before marauding into the box, only to fire wide with the goal gaping, and James Roberts unmarked to his left. It's all scrappy, even the throw just shit throw. The wasted chance jolts Dorking back into life, and they finally begin to intimidate their opponent's defence. Hey, Baz didn't. Shots off, shots off. Nick Wheeler teases Benny Reid before clipping the woodwork from close range. We're 26 minutes into the game now and Dorking are taking control. Still, as long as Haven't have 11 players on the pitch, they might just be able to stave off the Wanderers' attack. After committing a stonewall yellow card challenge earlier, Billy Clifford does the same thing again, earning an inevitable red card. It's hard to imagine what defence Jake Andrews is applying with the referee here. Try and open it up a bit. Out of Jace, you're walking in the way that, where they wanted to walk into. Come on, open it up. Open Perfect. it up. One pass. Dorking have got a familiar feeling as they move into the oceans of space afforded them by the dismissal. A patient side-to-side -side approach destroys the souls of their opponents, like a person who ordered the delivery an hour ago, only to find they didn't hit the confirm button. Yes! Yeah! 
Barry Fuller curls across deep into the box and Nick Wheeler gets his toe in ahead of Benny Reed, a man who we assume took his name from a gangster movie starring Craig Fairbrass. One more. Get another goal, that'd be nice. This could, uh, I'll tell you what, if we get another one. I'm going on. Jason and Alfie are inviting them Knicks. They're playing exactly where they want them to. Next goal! Good lead! Off we go! That's step up! Step up! DJ, higher! DJ, higher! Haven't's heads have dropped as they accept their fate, and Dorking's players are relishing the chance to smash in a tenth goal against them in just two games. Deliver! Back stick! Jason Pryor's first opening of the game very nearly brings them that second goal that Mark and his side crave. Next goal, please, come on. Yeah. That's side to side, we know that. Yeah, fuck out of whack it. Move on, Al! Move on! Let me stand still. Move on, Jones! Back in between, they came up! In between! Now deliver. What a hand! Come on, Dixie. Wanderers knock the ball around for fun before Matt Briggs drops a cross into the head of Jason Pryor, who has no problem knocking in the second goal. Ben, we need, we need to see how we need to know how Baz is big time. Because I want to make a change at the back. He's going to book him. DJ. It's never a booking. Right, so he's going to be coming off now. No, I've got to do that, yeah? It's no option. Still, Jay, come off now. Yeah, you yeah, have to. Can't keep one on a booking, no way. We'll just want to level it out. Yeah, yeah. With half time approaching and Alfie Rutherford not getting a sniff, the striker gets a little perturbed when Jamie Collins cuts him off. The striker's frustration is boiling over and he's keen to give the referee an earful on the way to the dressing room. I need to understand how you are. Yeah, I'm fine. He missed it. He missed it. It's okay. He missed it. No, but he missed it. He missed it though. Don't worry about it. He's looking for you in that Yeah, definitely. Right, so boys. Especially you, Deej. You're in the yellow. Let's just fucking not get involved at all. Mate, great half that is, mate. I'll tell you now. Right, shush. Shush. We're going to take the full break here, OK? Take the full break. Right, listen. This is what we're going to do, OK? It's what we're going to do. Cheech, you're going to come off. DJ, you're going to come off on that booking, OK? Bobby, you're going to go on, OK? Sammy's going to go centre-half, and Dan's going to go on, uh, push on to the holding bit to keep heart in the pitch, OK? All right? Obviously, no one's done anything wrong coming off there. But I want us to be as smart as we can be against this mob, okay? As smart as we can be. There's two things you can't do here. Is everyone else okay, by the way? Baz, you're 100% fine, yeah? yeah? Right. There's two things you can't do here. The reason you beat them with 10 men but eight goals is because you refuse to play into small shit areas. At the moment, you are doing that. You are doing that. Alfie, you keep your head. Their boy didn't keep his head. There's three points there for us today and there's four to five goals. If you look at the second goal we scored, it was just like Saturday, you're doing it, just, well, we're gonna keep the ball on the outside of you. Pepper, 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 ball in the box, goal. The minute you give them the ball, they go long. Every single time. That's it, right? So don't give them the fucking ball. So if you're playing that football manager, whatever it's fucking called, the, 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 the difficulty level of your passing now should be a three out of 10. Everything is just, to my mate. There's one, it's a funny old game, this. Funny old game. How smart can we be? Don't think football's predictable. Don't think we're going to go and get five goals. I've seen games like this, where the ref levels it up because you've done St. City Alf and he's fallen for it. And then all of a sudden they score one for the arse, the crowd get behind them and you're under pressure. Right? We are 45 minutes from an away three points in this league. And if you're prepared to play football, you're going to go and score some more goals. 
Get your fucking shape and keep the ball. But if you start going into pockets or direct, whoosh, lovely jubbly, that'll do us. Ain't got to think about it, right? So for me, we can relax a lot now. Play with diligence. When on the ball, when I say relax, we, put, we move the ball early, right? But we don't force things we don't need to force, okay? Baz, the Baz and Briggsy overload is a piece of piss. Can we get us three, four goals in two minutes if you want to use it, okay? Alfie, stay high, stay central, don't get involved. Ref going to look to level it up, all right? Simple as that. Bob, insurance balls, neat and tidy, do what you do well, okay? Sammy, organise, 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 not too deep, okay? Simple as that. All right, boys, oi, we're 45 minutes here from a good three points. Come on, come on. No. Come out of here with a third or fourth and put that half behind you. Keep your hands down, play the game and just run. We'll get the three points, get out of here. Come on, Alfie. And keep your goal tallies going, okay? Pride, great goal. Great goal. You okay, yeah? Good, Chief, what a mate, good off. I just got a funny feeling that we're going to have to be fucking professional to get through this. I just got a funny feeling about this game. Just trust my gut feeling. You've got to get the ball on the deck, you've got to be neat and tidy, really professional. Don't make it an Aggie game. Right, focus on the bench, yeah? We need another goal. Focus. Niall. Hey, up, Sammy! Up, Sammy! Come on, Alfie. Why? Sit in, Josh! As if it was somehow connected to the Haventon Waterlooville mood, a storm descends. But bad weather has rarely stifled a Dorking performance. Go on, you're out. Go on, go on, go on, get the ball. Bob, get round. Briggs the early, Briggs the early, Briggs the early! Take him on! They're still looking for Briggs to cut inside, but the Haven't defenders are doing an effective job on the winger. No, he's on the seven! Even with the rain in their faces, the coaching staff have noticed some disorganisation in the Dorking defensive shape. He's chasing the seven. Fucking See what I mean? This is what I said at half time. Look, see this? See this? Sorry. This is what I said at half time. Could, Jake, could they're fucking not organised and Jason's overcompensated, dropping in. They're still dropping in that midfielder, Beardy. The ball is loitering around the Haven box, and when Josh Taylor steals in, Jake Andrews gets caught out. I think he's given a free kick, isn't he? He's given a free kick, but it was a pen. It was a pen. I thought it was in. <laughs> Fucking hell! Jake Andrews nutmegging Niall McManus, a man half his size, is probably haven't highlighted the game so far. But Josh Taylor has his teammates back and he says talking on to another attack. Briggs' drive is parried well enough by Ross Warner. I do think we've got to try and kill this game off, Beardy. I think the best form of defence is attack, mate, always. always I think we've got, to, we've got to get a fucking goal shit. here. Alfie, On the hour mark, Alfie finally gets a sniff of the ball in the final third. I'll tell you what, mate, that's a fucking chance, that is. That's a fucking, honestly, anywhere you want. We've done any of those sort of balls in between them today, have we? With Nick Wheeler's shot still working its way towards the clouds, haven't realised they're drinking in the last chance saloon and they're running out of cash. But money is coming their way in the form of a pocket ball, this time played by Captain Barry Fuller. Breaks loose for Tommy Wright, and the centre forward clips a shot over Dan Lincoln, giving Haven't more hope than they would have expected with 20 minutes to go. Yeah, 
When Alfie gets in behind for the first time all game, he goes for the cheeky chip, only to sky the ball higher than even Nick Wheeler could dream. Josh! Kane! Can organise! Organise! Relax! Relax! Back this way. Where's the right back gone? Baz, come here! Baz, come here! Baz! Baz, this way. Give it, Josh! Right, you have a little run, Josh. Have a little run. Go on. Shockingly, Havens are still in the game, and a long ball from Warner forces an aerial duel for Dan Gallagher and Jamie Collins, whose approach isn't entirely sporting. Collins goes for the plead innocence in the face of certain guilt approach that's so prevalent in society thanks to a mophead twat in a suit. Anyway, unfortunately, the referee's having none of it. Play the line, gotta play the line. Sammy! Sammy, gotta play the line. Alfred, Alfred, put his feet, put your feet. Mark is getting manic as he urges his team to make the right decisions and see the game out. Matt Briggs chomps through the defence, slips in Niall McManus, and he slides the ball under Warner to seal the three points. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Jim, mate. Cheers, James. Cheers, mate. <laughs> that was a shit performance, lads, I'll tell you that now. Don't start fucking enjoying that. Listen, let me fucking work out how we play today. Can I tell you now, you fucking, you get out of fucking spells what you put in. There's some bad habits out there. Half time, I said the only, stop playing that one ball. Right? Listen, I'm here, my job is to fucking manage apples with apples. What that means is, say what you see for the good and the better one of the game. Dan Gallagher's defending like a fucking Trojan all day. The whole game, man of the match by a mile. Nicky, that's a fucking, like that chance, that's three nil. That is game over. What, what are you, why is it over the bar? We're not fucking Real Madrid. Right, fine fucking margins, yeah? I don't want to fucking watch a game of football having a fucking hernia against 10 men, right? What was good about us Boxing Day was we were professional and we were clinical and we'd done everything properly and everything right. I've told you a million times, I'm going to start finding them pocket balls now, £300 ago. Every time we lose one, £300. And see how many of those balls we play on the pitch. We gave them a goal and all of a sudden, you know, we're under fucking pressure. When, fancy playing a ball like that, when we've got overloads here. I'd, I'd rather pass around the back for fucking 35 minutes. Right? Jase, you shouldn't be coming in there because I said to you I don't mind getting it high and Baz, you should know better than to put it in there. Right? And I'm going to call that out because I don't want that to be at Ebb's Fleet when we go down 1-0 when it's a six-pointer. Fortunately, enough of your teammates. Bobby really tidy when he went on. Cheadle tidy first half. Baz defensively had a great game, especially when he'd done a little bit of a twist there. Josh Taylor, Niall. Fortunately, enough of your teammates today had solid games. But make no mistake, you played against 10 men there, right? You played against 10 men for fucking a long fucking time, right? And that game should have been fucking out of reach. We've also got a lot of games, two a week. So these, is that your calf, Jace? Yeah. yeah. These calves, this, this ain't gonna get through two a week. You know, Dan's gonna look like a fucking elephant man tomorrow, right? So we're gonna need everybody to fucking get us through where we are, right? Good news is it's four straight wins, but no league was ever won by looking at the scoreline. The leagues are won, or the good seasons are had, when you've always got one eye on what's going on the bigger picture. Okay, and that's what I'm like, that's how I work. So I'll tell you done well at Boxing Day. Today I thought was a very split situation. Just to be clear, I am pleased. 
with the result. I am pleased and I will fucking go home and I'll fucking be pleased about that. OK, I will be very pleased. But, I, you know, the more we get results, the more the other teams look at us and the more they've got a target on us. So the better we've got to get as you're getting results, you have to keep getting better because other teams start getting better. OK. All right, boys. Well done. Yeah, I thought it was poor um, across the 90. I thought disappointing to see um, a bit of complacency. And other teams can do no more than give you an extra man twice. And across the two games, they've done that twice. Um, so, uh, you know, basically uh, two new up against 10 men, you just go and kill the game off. Um, and we were a little bit, uh, well, we were the opposite of clinical. I thought we were a bit uh, lackadaisical, not that clever, trying to play into pockets. The famous old pocket ball gave them their goal, which I'm fuming about. And probably they want to be thanking the lucky stars we got out of here three points, because if that had been what had invited them in the game, that ball, then I think I'd have had to blow up the haven't changing room on another level. I'm Mark Beard and I'm head of coaching. And how long have you been doing that for? Uh, end of October, I left Stockport County. He's invited me down head of coaching, which is to do with the first team. I've got to oversee the academy at some point, just get the philosophy of the first team all the way filtered through the clubs. I think probably because of my experience and he knows how I work, I know how he works. My son was here for five years and I was doing part time coaching for him. So I know how he works and he knows that um, he obviously like values me as a coach, values my opinion. So I, I wasn't in there, but your team talk, did they get a bit of a telling off yeah it? yeah no no I mean Dan Gallagher got some praise and I said well done for the physical aspect of winning but no nothing about that pleased me um, obviously you you carry performances you carry standards uh, game to game um, and today was poor thought Dan Lincoln in goal um, is doing a really good job and Dan Gallagher who's played out of position all season well for the last five six games was man of the match um, we had other boys that done their regular sort of seven out of ten job, Josh Taylor and Armut Manus. Um, but then around that, I thought was was very average by our standards. So I, I think we, we've had a, we didn't have an extra game. We played a team today that played three games. This would be their third game in, in the best part of seven days. And two of those, they played with ten men. So, you know, I call it as I see it, you know, we should have punished that today. Mark has an approach which is much more, this is how we play, whether you know it or not, you can't stop us. Yeah. Um, as, as, a, as a coach coming in, having me already given away loads of that stuff, do you feel the same or is there part of you that thinks, no, we should probably keep some of this hidden? No, I don't think that. I, 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 you've got to have trust in your players for one. Um, and the fact that, People may know what they're coming to do, but um, we're better than you. We're going we're gonna to outwork you, we're going to outthink you, we're going to outplay you. And if it's not working our tactics, then we could change it just like that as well. So that's, that's how we think as a coaching team, as a man management team, um, and that comes across to the players as well. So it doesn't matter. Like some teams like say, oh, we're going to hide our back four in a warm-up just so they don't know what we're doing. But we not, don't care about that. We just play what we play and we play the way we do. And, um, and this up to the other teams to work us out. What do you expect them to do on the pitch against him? Just, 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 they teach you at school, don't they? Just make the pitch as big as possible. Um, work out where your overloads are going to be. Um, and that's it. I mean, we had massive overloads, hence the fact we passed it across the back, you know, almost continuously. And then we tried to force a ball into a centre forward into a pocket to give it away to then go 2-1 away from home and give the opposition a hope of winning. And I was fuming on another level at that because at half time I specifically said, not that fucking ball. And I'm not just saying it, but since start taking the defensive set pieces, we've not conceded in six now. We've not really been hit on a counter as much and um, the results have obviously started to improve a bit. Now, I think one of the reasons is because of that defensive side, if you get defensive structures set up first of all, the attacking side, which, which everyone can see, we're, we're, that's massive strength of us and uh, I think opposition now you've seen it against Oxford seen it against Dartford seen it against Haven in two games that they don't know what to do they've got no answer to it so attacking or defensively so as long as we do what we're supposed to do on the pitch and the players and the coaches on the side to make sure they're like bang on it um, I, I could see us being in the top three again you know 
football seasons tend to be played in patches. The boys have done brilliantly. Um, and um, four straight wins in this division is, is difficult. Um, home and away against Haven, although they've given us 10 men in both games. Um, but we've, we're only ever two minutes, Rich, from the next problem. I'm looking at that now. Price come off with a dodgy calf. Not a good sign um, if it's the same one. Um, hopefully precautionary. Um, Dan Gallagher's got half a knee. Nicky Wheeler's done his thigh, probably where he put the ball 40 foot over the fucking goal. Um, when, when, instead of just making it 3 0. Um, but um, no, I feel like um, we've got some work to do, to be honest with you. Um, but we will do that work. Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. Please hit the buttons, the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment because that helps us with the algorithm. This week's comment of the week comes from Jake who says, I feel like it's only a matter of time before you get approached with a Netflix or Amazon contract. They couldn't afford us, Jake. That's not strictly true. If anyone from Netflix or Amazon is watching, then please do get in touch as soon as physically possible.